uh, for people who don't know who you are, I'm pretty, pretty sure everyone in the chat knows who, who you are, but for, for people who don't uh, know who you are, uh, who are you and what do you do? Uh, yeah, I'm just another idiot on the internet. It's the best way to describe myself. <laughs> it's like I have the, the Comics Division YouTube channel. Don't ask me why I picked the name. It was kind of dumb. And yeah, it's stuck. I should have changed it. But yeah, it is what it is, considering I don't talk about comic books anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can follow me uh, at Comics Division on Twitter, and um, you know, obviously, if you Google or you know, look on uh, YouTube for Comics Division, you'll find me. All right, awesome. And so, um, I typically ask this for our guests, uh, especially the new uh, the new ones for the first time. We thank you so much again. Um, uh, how did you get started with like YouTube? Like, what what made you de uh, decide? You know what? I'm going to make a YouTube channel and talk about comic nerdy stuff. Like, what sort of sparked your your flame to get that started? Okay, so obviously with the name uh, Comics Division, uh, I, I initially started my channel to talk about comics because a lot of the woke crap, you know, it, before we started calling out woke, before that term was popular, it was SJW, right? So mm -hmm. the issue that we were seeing in comics were, you know, this kind of creep into entertainment. And I got to the point where it's like, I, I, I can't just sit here and say nothing about what is going on in comics because it was getting pretty ridiculous. And there was like several things I'd missed too. Uh, like the whole, you know, ask me about my famous Jenna thing with, um, I can't remember the, the writer's name. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, that, that was with the Mockingbird comic. But there there are certain things that were going on. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then I, I kind of started discovering what became like the the proto uh, Comicsgate people like Anglantine from I Love Comics. Of course, there's your boy Zach over at Diversity in Comics. Now, Comics with your boy Zach, I think is kind <laughs> Uh, Captain Cummings, Phil Cummings, you know, he had a great channel and that's the people who kind of inspired me to create my own channel and talk about these things. Right. Because there's nothing worse than having your entertainment being hijacked. And of course, you know, comics was the proving ground and moved off into TV shows and, and movies. And, you know, during that time period, I started seeing something slipping in, into television as well. Uh, right. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I got my start. And I, I just I had to say something about it because I, I wasn't too keen with this SJW agenda that was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh I I think the first time where I started seeing a lot of these like weird things, um, I so I, I started watching The Flash, I think when it came out back in a TV show in uh, 2014. And I'm like, oh, this is actually really cool. You know, I like this and um they're changing a, a bunch of stuff, but it wasn't really like it didn't really hit me over the head until one episode where um I, did did you watch the CW Flash TV show? No, I was never a big fan of the CW stuff. Okay. I tried. I tried watching Green Arrow, and I got halfway through like season one. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> it's the same thing with like the Marvel uh, Agents of Shields. I, I hated that show. I mean, there's like a lot of you know stuff that I should have liked, but I didn't because I just I thought it was garbage, and you know it, it just yeah you know, didn't resonate with me. So I, I just didn't watch it. Yeah, I, I I tried. Like I really really tried watching uh, Agents of Shields. I'm just like I I couldn't get into it. It's because I didn't really care about the yeah. characters like it felt they brought back mm -hmm. Joe Coulson and stuff but back to uh, the flash um I think it was like season four I think these I think season four when Iris and Barry Allen got married or they, they're getting married and um they did an episode where uh it was like a bachelorette party and they're just, you know, doing a big bachelorette party thing and but you know mm -hmm. the villains start showing up and the maid of honor goes hashtag feminism <laughs> that's why I stopped watching it was so bad i'm like what the hell is this you know you don't yeah, have to say that you know like if you didn't say that i probably would have continued watching the show probably but you can tell like a lot there's a lot of strong female representation i'm not saying that this shouldn't be or or you know like comics shouldn't have you know, strong females or anything like that but yeah that's that's not the issue the the issue is the agenda and the the mary suing of characters and you know the kind of you know degrading male characters to uplift female characters i mean i'm not cool with that in the slightest you know i mean i'm i'm fine with you know strong female heroines but you know they gotta have a personality and it can't you know their, their character arc can't be about oh they were great all along it was just the patriarchy holding them down it's like that's that's not character development and, yeah, and, if, if you, you, and you could do something like that and have them realize okay this is dumb and actually have character growth um but it, it, it's you know the, the whole thing right now with uh particularly female characters is that um and it's funny because a lot of females also feel this way is that they're very boring because they, they aren't flawed characters. It's not mm -hmm. like the male ones that we, we have. 
you know, there's that motivation, you know, there's something in their past that is um, holding them back and, and not like society holding them back. It, it's like something happened, like they lost a loved one or they failed at their job or, you know, X, Y, Z. And that's all for me. I want to see how my female characters as well as I want to see them just as flawed and messed up as the, ma the male counterparts. Yeah, I, I OK, so uh, th th this is going to sound racist. But the thing is that one of my favorite <laughs> Disney animated movies is uh, Mulan. OK, for, for no particular well, reason. It's, it's, other it's than, a good movie. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I watched the, it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I watched that, you know, back when it came out on like DVD or VHS. You know, I didn't see mm -hmm. it in the theater. And I mean, it was a great story. I mean, and that I, I actually went out of my way to rent it from like Blockbuster because I, I couldn't find anything else. I was like, ah, oh, I was going to check out Mulan. And it was, it was a good story. And yeah, that's, that's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with liking it you, with you liking cause you're Asian or whatnot, or with me <laughs> liking cause I'm, you know, non-Asian. You know, it, it's just, a, it was a good story uh, had filled with great characters and, and good moments. And that's all we can ask for. Did you watch the live action one? No, I didn't. Okay. So, so that, that, that's my comparison for it. So I, I'm like, okay, this movie is going to be more serious. It's going to be more realistic. You know, we're not going to have Mushu or anything like that. But they have a witch that can turn into a million bats and a weird phoenix in the background for some reason. But, you know, yeah. I want to keep it grounded and realistic. And hmm. uh, it's sort of, in the beginning, it sort of reminded me of Frozen. You know how Frozen's like, oh, you have the special power. You got to hide it. You know, people are not going to accept mm -hmm. you. And uh, same thing happened with Mulan, the live action. It's like, you have this chi that you have extra chi in you. And people are going to, you know, Mulan, you're not supposed to like jump around the buildings because people are going to be afraid of your power. So the dad's like, you got to, you know, you got to tone that you down. You got to hide it. Down. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's so it's so stupid. And then during the whole part where, you know, um, I'll make a man out of you, like that whole part where they're doing the montage of training, like sh there was no struggle. Yeah. Like how mm -hmm. she she would train and like fail and then get better. And then her ingenuity and her uh, perseverance got got her, the, the attention of uh, Gen uh, was, yeah, General Shang, which eventually made her like one of the more formidable characters in the movie of Mulan. But mm -hmm. what happened in this one is just like she was just good all along. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. that's the issue. That's the thing I'm I'm kind of complaining about. And, I mean, there, and there's certain characters I, I, I like to, you know, talk about, you know, storytelling. And you have like multiple phases in the character's life, right? There's like, the, you know, the call to adventure where they're a complete novice. And you see this like with Luke Skywalker and and ray at least that's how she was supposed to be and then you have a more mature character who is at the top of their game and you have a character like Motoko kuzunagi from ghost and shell uh and the, what separates her from being a mary sue and because you know she is very competent in what she does it, it, you have to understand the character that like with her flaws it has nothing to do with her ability it has everything to do with her being able to relate to humanity being in a mm -hmm. cybernetic body and she was in a cybernetic body since like she was five she was in plane crash and you know they were able to save her life but you know she was you know put in this prosthetic body and uh she had to learn to adapt and which makes th it's the reason why she's so competent and such a badass but when it comes to relating to other people i mean she's literally more machine than man and you know th there's that kind of like great, great philosophical um, aspects of Ghost in the Shell was like, what does it mean to be human when you're basically a machine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and, and I think that's what cur like I current day and I blame my stupid ass generation, the the millennials, is because um, yeah, it you know, started with mine. <laughs> well, okay, I, here's the thing. Um, I, I I had a neighbor when he was leaving is because like he moved out of California because uh his he found out that like during zoom calls and during the whole lockdown and stuff like that his son was being taught that the reason why mm. uh, america is awful is because of white people and yeah. his dad was like what the hell is going on so it turned the laptop towards him and you know you're talking to me now what, what are you talking about and he's like well um uh, you know hi mr so-and-so he's like oh i didn't know you were there he's like yeah what are you saying that you're telling my son and everyone in his classroom that uh you know the reason why america is bad is because of me you know, because of white people like us and then um mm -hmm. and then i listened to him talking he's like yeah he's like i had enough and then we talked to the the school and the school district and we ended up moving to missouri i'm like wow so the thing is that you have people who are who are um so talked about in in, in that kind of way how you're, you're saying oh you're bad because of this you're bad because of that i think that's the reason why people are just like so 
so like they, they don't care. And he told me, I was like, yeah. Yeah, like whose fault is it? And it's like, well, actually, it's Gen, it's Gen X's fault. At, yeah. and, like it's because our parents, they did all the hard work. They did everything. They went through war and stuff like that. And they gave us a great life. And then we took it for granted and we t taught our kids that. So, so he well, was like, I mean, it, yeah, it, that, that's, it honestly, yeah. a lot of that philosophy start with the boomers. Right. And, you know, cause that, I mean, all the stuff like, uh, intersectional feminism, um, Oh God, I'm totally blanking on it. Critical theory came out of the sixties. So it's really the hippies fault in reality. <laughs> and when the nineties came about, this stuff did show up. Um, it was called political correctness uh, back then. And the difference was that the people who embraced it now were the ones that were beating it back. I mean, okay. there was a movie called PCU making fun of the whole PC movement. You know, I mean, you had Saturday Night Live mocking this whole thing with asking permission to kiss. Right. I mean, it's just like this, there's this thing where, you know, you, you know, right. Whether someone's into you or not. And the idea, may I kiss you, is retarded. Because uh, I, I was still in college when a lot of this stuff was going on. Mm -hmm. and, and so a, a lot of it when, it, when it started creeping to the school, specifically the colleges, right? Uh, I mean, I went to college. I, I remember there was a, a teacher that uh, we had who was a out Marxist, you know, mm -hmm. talked about how awful capitalism was. Everybody wanted to take his course. I was like, why, why would you want to take a political science course? from a Marxist, you know, Marxism is dumb. E even before when I know about it now, it was just like, okay, this whole Marxism thing is retarded. And <laughs> so it, it's like, you know, because the teachers like him that took over and, and a lot of it too, it, it wasn't just the, um, the fact that th the, the leftist got into education. It's because the right and in, in, in the moderates as well, abandoned education and they left it to the leftists and they were able to go and, start kind of like taking things over. And I mean, really we start kind of seeing things begin to kind of ramp up was the early two thousands with the Gulf war. Um, you know, you had some things and there was a bit of cancel culture coming from the right during that time period as well. You saw the same thing with the Dixie chicks criticizing Bush in the war and people were trying to cancel them. And Gilbert Gottfried got canceled because he made a nine 11 joke. Um, and which cost him, you know, the Affleck contract, because he was the voice of Affleck, that, you know, the Affleck duck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things kind of were, weren't like a huge big deal, but where the wokeness really started to kind of creep in, I noticed it was after the, oh God, I don't remember what shooting it was. Um, it was the one that Alex Jones got sued over. Oh, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's not, it's not Sandy Hook, but, uh, but I, I, yeah, Sandy Hook. Sandy is, Hook. is it Sandy Hook? Okay. Yeah, okay. It Sandy Hook. All right. So, and, and I started seeing all these like anti white articles, and that's where you start seeing things about privilege and, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And, you know, and a lot of it was, you know, your generation was the one that was like really kind of embracing it. And so you had, you know, all, all the stuff going on. And it's like, okay, whatever. And what, as we continue to see things, you know, leading up to the election of Donald Trump and the massive amount of TDS that was happening. And, and, th and this is where things really exploded and got worse was because of Trump's election and people just, you know, getting massive doses of TDS. Uh, and of course, all that really started creeping into entertainment as a result of that. I mean, it was like I said, it was already there, kind of not, not as bad as it was. Uh, definitely yeah. in comics. And it, it just it just got worse. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.